Honor students, we're talking through concept three, which is energy flow through ecosystems. Now, this concept is super important because this is going to give us the big picture understanding of how energy flows from one organism to another. And then in concept four and five, we're going to specifically talk about the biochemical reactions that make this possible. So really important that you pay attention and understand this so that it'll make understanding concept four and five much easier for you. So, all energy on Earth comes from the sun. That's where it all comes from. If the sun wasn't here, we would not be here. So, how do we get that energy then in, in order to use it? Because we know that the usable form that we get energy is ATP. So, how do we go from the sun to ATP? Well, there's several ways of obtaining energy. One way is being a producer. Producers are also known as autotrophs. Auto meaning self, troph meaning nourish, so self-nourishers. They obtain energy from non-living sources, so their actual being makes their own food. They don't walk into a kitchen and make a sandwich and think that they're a producer. No, their actual body makes their food for them. Majority of producers capture energy during photosynthesis to make simple sugars, but we'll talk on the next slide. There's another process they can do as well. Um, examples of producers are plants, algae, and some bacteria. Another way of obtaining energy is like humans. You can be a consumer, also known as a heterotroph. Hetero meaning other and troph meaning nourish. So other nourishment is where we get our um, energy. We obtain energy from living things or once living things. You know, when you eat a hamburger, that was a once living cow. Um, it's not non-living because it was once alive. It's just no longer alive. Examples of consumers are animals, fungus, people, um, other things like that. Now, how producers obtain their energy, there's not, it's not just photosynthesis. There are two different processes that some producers can do. Both of these processes use non-living sources for energy. Photosynthesis uses sunlight. Synthesis means to make, so photo means light. So this is making food out of light. Chemosynthesis, we're making food out of chemicals. Um, that's our source of energy. Examples of organisms that can do photosynthesis are green plants and cyanobacteria, and then deep sea vent bacteria can do chemosynthesis. Um, so photosynthesis is basically taking carbon dioxide and water. We're making sugar and oxygen. This is not the balance equation. It's just a general equation for it. Whereas chemosynthesis, we're taking carbon dioxide and water, um, and basically sulfur-rich substances, and we're making sugar and sulfuric acid. Okay, so how do consumers get their energy if we can't make it? We're going to eat other organisms to get energy. And then we're going to break down the macromolecules we eat and release ATP from them to be used by our cells. And that's going to happen during cellular respiration, which we'll talk about in detail in concept five. And there's four types of consumers. You can be an herbivore like this little guy, and they eat only vegetation. Carnivores eat only meat. Omnivores eat both. And then detrivores, or decomposers, are scavengers, or um, they eat dead or decaying materials. So I want you to watch this little video clip. If you can click on this, that's great. If you have to search, because you're watching this on YouTube, search Fly to the Dung Beetle. It's a BBC Earth little video clip. It's great. And see how many producers and consumers you can identify in the video. And bonus points if you can identify the type of consumer that you see. All right, for the second half of this notes, we're going to talk about food chains, food webs, and trophic pyramids. A food chain shows a single flow of energy, and it also shows trophic levels, which are levels of nourishment, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So this food chain shows energy flowing from the grass into the grasshopper that eats it, into the mouse that eats the grasshopper, into the owl that eats the mouse. So arrows show where the energy is going, and they're always going one direction. The grasshopper eats the grass. The grass does not eat the grasshopper. Now, the rule of 10, as energy flows from organism to organism, it's used for metabolism and or it's being converted to heat. So because of this, the next organism's only getting 10% of the energy obtained in the previous level. So grass makes its own food. It's a producer. It's an autotroph. So it has 100% of the energy that it makes available to it. But when a grasshopper eats it, this grasshopper is only really getting 10% of that original energy because the other 90% is being used or lost as heat. 
And I put lost in quotations because we know from physical science that energy is never lost. Um, it just changes forms. Now, when that mouse eats the grasshopper, it's getting 10% of the grasshopper's energy. So 10% of that 10% is only 1% of the original energy. The owl's only getting 10% of that 1%, which is 0.1%. So we'll look at this more in a trophic pyramid, and I'll maybe help you in a minute. But only 10% is being passed on. 90% is being used or lost as heat. All right, so we mentioned trophic levels being levels of nourishment. Producers are always the first trophic level, the first level of nourishment. They're the base for all ecosystems. Because remember, all energy comes from the sun. That's our original source. And we as consumers can't get that energy and use it. So we rely on producers as our base to kind of start off the food chains. The second energy level is primary consumers or first consumers like grasshoppers. The third energy level is the second consumers or the secondary consumers. Next would be like the fourth level or the tertiary consumers, the third order consumers. Above that is the fifth level, the quaternary consumers. So these are the different trophic levels, levels one, two, three, four, and on and on. And then they have trophic level names as well. They're just referring to the levels of nourishment in these food chains. Again, energy is flowing one direction, it's flowing up. Most of the energy is at the bottom, the least amounts at the top. Now, see if you can classify each type of consumer. The grasshopper eats grass, so it's an herbivore. The mouse eats the grasshopper, so it's a carnivore. The owl eats the mouse, so it's a carnivore too. Now, food web looks more complicated, but it's really not bad. It's just showing multiple food chains at once and how they interconnect. So you could have a food web for a whole ecosystem and show how all the different organisms interact. So notice the base is still a producer, it's still our grass. We have a couple food chains here. There's four different ones. We could go grass to beetle to bird to owl. We go grass to grasshopper to bird to owl. We go grass to mouse to owl. Or we could go grass to grub to mouse to owl. So all these are showing different food chains in this one food web. We could take one of those food chains and we could translate it into a trophic pyramid, which is just a model to show how energy flows through an ecosystem. And we specifically use a pyramid because producers always go on the bottom, which is the widest part, the base, because they're the base of the ecosystem, and they have the most energy available to them. And then it goes up and up and up in terms of trophic levels. So the top level is the, the highest level consumer, which has the least amount of energy available to it, which is why it's the most narrow part of the pyramid. And these pyramids can kind of come in three forms. One form is an energy pyramid, so it's going to show the amount of energy, usually in calories. Again, remember the rule of 10, so it's going to only 10% pass on each time. A numbers period is going to show the actual number of organisms at each level. And for a stable ecosystem, you should have, it should be balanced, you know. However many producers you have, you should only have 10% of that amount as first consumers, 10% of that amount as second consumers, and etc. You can also show it as biomass. So you can actually show the amount of kilograms, the total mass of organic matter at each level. So if there's 10,000 kilograms of producers, there should only be 1,000 kilograms of primary consumers and 100 kilograms of secondary consumers, and etc. I know that's a lot of words, but I think it'll make sense when we look at this in a picture. So let's look at an example. If we take that original food chain we looked at a few slides back, we can put it in a trophic pyramid. So the grass or producer goes on the first level and then it fills in from there. Because grass is the base, it's the foundation of this whole food chain. Without grass, the other things could not get the energy they need. So if I want to label the trophic level numbers, I'm going to do that in blue. We start at the bottom. One, two, three, four. I'm going to label the names in pink. Remember, the bottom is always producers or autotrophs. And then we have primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer. And then energy available, it says student percentage. So I'm going to do, remember, first level would have 100% because they make their own food. Grasshopper, according to the rule of 10, only gets 10%. The mouse gets 10% of this 10, which is 1. And the owl gets 10% of this 1, which is 0.1%. So this is something you may have to do. You'll get a food chain. You'll have to put it into trophic pyramid. I think you can do it, and we're going to practice it a good bit in class.